go here, my gang. It's your boy here on my trail. Now we're going to get into the video where Randy Moss says that he's number one of all time. Jerry Rice is three or four. Three or four, that's just disrespectful. Three or four, you're not even going to put him in the top three, top two. That's just disrespectful. So we're going to react to it. Uh, let's just get right into it. Excited to see what they say. And prove them wrong. Because hey, Randy, who's the best receiver to ever play in the NFL? You're talking to him. <laughs> I get it all the time. You know, who's the best? Who's the best receiver? Well, we, well, we, 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 we going to get that in. We're going to get that right, in. Because with me, and, me and Hatch, I had to hang up on Hatch on this uh, probably like about a month or so ago. <laughs> he had, right, he had cry, baby. Because he knew I was right, Mossy. He he, knew I, was I right. tried to tell him, I said, Randy's good. I said, but I'm more of a complete receiver than Randy. I said, I did everything in the book. I said, Randy is good for taking the top off. That's what people know. Exactly. I said, yo, he's had a couple of slants and things of that nature that he a couple? takes to the house. A couple? Yeah, but he ain't really, he ain't, in my opinion, there is the not, best. most of his, most of his touchdowns, they, they bounce. Okay, okay, bones. we go, so let, now we getting into it. So this is what we go <laughs> do. I'm going to start you, before we get into that conversation, I'm going to give you the criteria on who's the better receiver between T.O. and Moss. It because don't even matter, because Jerry's criteria, better than right? both of them. It's not about he can speed run every route. and size combination, because we know... And he's slower than both of them. Come on, now. The NFL that had that, right? So the first thing I'm going to... First criteria is, do you show up in big games? Obviously, right? T.O. did. It's got to be one, right? So the second broken criteria leg. is big catches or your big highlights or your big plays, right? Third is uh, how many times... Do you guys get double covered, right? And then 3B would be, do you guys still perform versus the double coverage, right? Oh. Five would be Hall of Fame corners. What did you guys do versus Thank other you. Hall of Fame What did you do against the Real Reavers? Corners that you went up against. What did you do against one -on -one, Right? Six is, of course, your hands yeah. or your playmaking ability versus defenders. This ain't count when you guys are wide open, right? You guys are very wide open anyway. But again, when the defender or two defenders are on you, do you still make the play? Okay. Seven is your run after catch or your like play making ability when your ball is in your hand. Okay. Number eight, catches over or between two or three people. Number nine, play in numerous systems with numerous quarterbacks and still put up numbers. Uh, That's and, me all day. And number 10. All right, all right. I see where they're trying to go with this. I see where the they're trying to go with this already. I see where they're trying to go with this. Commercial break. Now that we've helped people customize. I see what they're going to try to go They're going to try and say, since Jerry had Joe Montana, Steve Young, best quarterbacks in the game, he he can't be the best. I, I know. I already know what they're trying to do. That's That's not the case. It's not the case. It's not the case. Defensive coordinator put you as the number one priority to stop you that week. Were you the that's, number one that's, priority? That's been everywhere. That's been everywhere in my career. If you so, think about, I I made I made, and I didn't bro. I think this is this is how I wasn't so pause. Do you notice the two players? The one player that people really consider the goat hasn't said anything. He doesn't even have to say anything. His resume speaks for itself, and the two players. Where his resume doesn't really speak for itself, they have to speak for theirself. <laughs> so does that really tell you who really the goat is? Come on now, Jay Rice hasn't even—he brushed it off. He basically was like, "Y'all could think whatever. My stats, my rank speaks for itself." Just saying, just saying. If you really gotta speak yourself and call yourself the goat, are you really the goat? Because Jerry doesn't call himself the goat. His resume calls him to go because his resume speaks for itself. But I'm just saying, let's get back into it. With statistics and things of that nature. Bro, I didn't even know what all pro, five time all pro. I didn't really, really know all of that stuff until obviously you get nominated for the Hall of Fame and then they start rambling off your stats. Like, oh, well, he was five time all pro. Bro, all pro is a like, big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, I didn't really know any of that stuff. So I was like, at one point in time, I was like, okay, I just want to make, the, I just want to make the Pro Bowl. I felt like, okay, if I got a nod to the Pro Bowl, then okay, I'm making some noise. But when you think about Pro Bowl, uh, I mean, doing nothing. it everywhere that you know, being productive everywhere they played, 
I know that I did that because I yeah, outplayed was. and I was I ain't gonna lie, a receiver. Was. Even when I didn't, even when teams basically, especially at the end of my career, when they they didn't even think that I would be the number one receiver, I outplayed my last two years. I outplayed two guys that was with their quarterbacks for the entirety of pretty much the entirety of their right. career. In Buffalo, I, Lee Evans was there. I then, outplayed right. him, of course. The second half of the season, that was when. Ryan Fitzpatrick got in that quarterback position. Bro, I was like a, I had like 800 and I think 30 something or whatever yards, but I didn't get a bulk of those yards until Trent Edwards got hurt and then Ryan Fitzpatrick came in. So then I started to ball out. I outplayed Lee Evans, like I said, the second second half of the season because I had a quarterback that knew who to get the ball to. And then mm-hmm. you fast forward a year after that, I go to Cincinnati. Chad has been with Carson Palmer for at this point like nine, ten years. Yeah. I go in there. A month in training camp. They didn't even sign me initially in March. They had Antonio Bryant. They brought him. He was ten years younger than uh, ten years younger than I was. So that's what they went with. I was thirty-seven. He was twenty-seven at the time. And that was like I went and met with Marvin Harrison. I mean uh, Marvin Lewis, the head coach, and whatever. We went in for the dinner or what have you. And then on my way- up oh, commercial break. All right. Uh- All right, Terrell Owens, he's making solid points. He has, yeah, he makes solid points. But it's like, <sighs> I kind of need my phone to really put this in this perspective. The guy told me, goes, man, they signed Antonio Bryant. I was like, what? So I was like, all right, cool. So I, I, I'm, I'm still a free agent. Months ago, I, they go into mini camp, OTAs. Then I find out he has an injury. They bring me into training camp. I go into training camp for a month, learning to play. That was a number system, different system than I've ever really played in. But I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to make it work. I had to learn. Obviously, you know, Carson Palmer brought me in. He saw me work out over the summer uh, in L.A., told the guys that I, you know, that I look good. They brought me in. And then, again, the rest is history. So you think about, like I said, being able to really flourish in every system. Um, like I said, I was in control, and Randy can attest to this, you don't, you don't really matter about who's the quarterback or whatever. If you got confidence in your ability and you know what you can do, if you got a, 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 a head coach, an offensive coordinator that puts you in the right position and you're in the right system, it's just like I said, we were alluding to earlier, you know, having just say both of us on the team. If you have the right offensive mind that can put both of them yeah. in a position to, to succeed, then you're going to be productive because you're so confident in your ability. All we need is the ball. Yeah. You just need the quarterback to get the ball to us, and we're going to do what I we see do. What tra- so that's what I did. I didn't really worry about, honestly, like the quarterback situation. The only time that I started to worry about that is when I was in, when I was in Buffalo because I'm like, I never really played with a young quarterback like Trent Edwards. And True. prior to coming in or them signing me to that one-year deal, they said, yo, we want you to come in and kind of help groom this young quarterback alone. And at that point in my career, I'm like, yo, this is the first time I'm ever hearing this. I'm like, yo, this is like, one of those conversations I was like, okay, you're kind of on your way out. They want yeah. you to just come in and groom a guy. Yeah, I'm like, weird. I never really heard that type of thing before. So I'm like, all right, cool. I ain't really tripping. I'm just going to ball out and do what I do. And so that's it, man. I, I mean, everywhere that I went, I basically adjusted my game to not only the, the, the systems. Most of the systems I played in was sort of West Coast based. Um, but I just like said, and you, just you, still, you still put Jerry Rice as your number one receiver. Yeah, I mean, I think statistically, yeah. I mean, think about, I didn't ask you statistically. Yeah, I, said, I mean, who's, yeah. Jerry Rice is the you. best receiver in the NFL. At least T.O. has some sense. At least T.O. has some sense. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Right. Okay. This is why I respect Randy, you, Terrell. Who's the best receiver I respect you, in the NFL? I respect you, T.O. You're talking you. to him. All right. Oh, okay. gosh, Randy. So, <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put myself first. I'll put T.O. That's just so disrespectful, Randy. Altria Randy. is moving in a new direction. Randy. Randy. You got locked up by Darrell Revis. Oh my gosh. The potentially less harmful choices. Yo, second. And you, you never know, was able to recover. Jerry, you Jerry never had a, another fourth. good I'm game against them to where you could really have like a game, battle matchup like Gary and Neon. I don't live on statistics because if you live on statistics and live on championships, that's all political. Mm-hmm. You, you've seen guys mm-hmm. cut the jet. You've seen guys. Jay Rice can run every, any route in the NFL. Just by a couple words in the media. You've you seen ran guys one. giving contracts 
uh, or are you seeing guys not given con contract just because the color of their skin? So I think that you gotta you gotta throw politics out of the game of football mm -hmm. and look at the look at the impact of what each individual was able to make in the game of football. You know, I don't mm -hmm. I don't you know discredit anything that a guy like Marvin Jerry Terrell has done for the game. But when I look at the game of football and my impact of, uh, <clears throat> you know, being able to come in as a rookie, leave, coming in hot, leaving hot with all the double, with all the triple coverage coming in, I really don't like talking about being the best wide receiver of the game because I never set my goals into, into being the best. But I think that at the end of the day, you know, to look at a lot of, a lot of accomplishments from the guys that they think that are at, at the top. I mean, rightfully so, T.O. could be one, Jerry could be one, anybody else could be one. But I think that okay. when I look at myself, and I'm not looking at any highlights, just talking about the game of football, uh, uh, being able to come in as a rookie, uh, set a record for being the highest scoring offense in the National Football League, and then being able to go back 10 years later and do it do again. It again. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of, of of the impact of the game of football that I look at. I, I'm, I'm really not a big statistics guy, really not. And I really don't like the argument about who was the best. I mean, jokingly, of course, I'm going to say myself, but I really I mean, don't yeah, like, of course. I really you, don't you like the yourself. argument of, who's the best in the game because respectfully uh, I, I, I give myself the nod because you, if you're not going to bet and believe in yourself, then really who are you? Mm -hmm. But uh, I look at the impact that guys like Terrell has made in the game, man. And that's why I feel that, you know, when dealing, when dealing with changing the game of football, when you see that they're putting two guys over me, they're putting two guys and three over Terrell itself. So, like I say, I look at I look at the game and it and it kind of it, it kind of makes me feel a certain way when we boil down the discussion of who's the okay. greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't like talking about it because I'm 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 really I really feel a certain type of way because I really don't base it upon numbers. It's not you the number. Why do you feel no, a certain it's not, type it's, of way? It's though. really not the number. Just, uh... And I just look at the impact of the game. Guys, living on junk food? Stop. Eat real food that tastes great and lose weight with Nutrisystem for men. Man, because, uh, you know, I had two years in Oakland. One year I fell off, and that's where all the talk about I lost the step, I lost the speed. Oh, yeah. So, and then the year, T.O., that you're talking about that I was on three teams in one year. Uh -huh. So, realistically, I had a 14-year career, but if you subtract those two years, I really had a 12-year career putting up those type of numbers. So, mm -hmm. I don't really like to oh, talk yeah, he was statistics on the when talking Vikings, about, the Titans, you know, and the Niners. greatness <laughs> or who's the greatest of all time. But I just look like, oh, at the Bowl, impact of players. Yeah. I don't care if it's the guard, offensive line, or wide receivers, man. All right. All right, I can understand it. I respect all both of their uh, perspectives. I'm still going to say Jerry's the GOAT. T.O. said it himself. Uh, but, yeah, it's really... I mean, I guess you could say statistics is a very... I mean... You can even make... I mean, I'm just saying this. You can make the case Chad Johnson is the best. He's the best route runner out of all of them. The best route runner out of all of them. But then you got T.O. This literally says on the screen, I'm on one leg. You can't stop me. If you're on literally just one leg and the team still can't stop you, that really does put you in that go conversation. Randy. You're right, those two years, those the one year, your rookie year, and then when you went to the Patriots and they wow, was the Super Bowl and lost, those are probably your two. You had a lot of great years, but I would say those were two were my favorite years, especially the one with the Patriots because I was actually alive to see that one. That was a great one. And then uh, Jerry. It all speaks for itself. Like, he did it against the best. 
um, in Dion. Uh, he can run every route, literally. His hands were great. He showed up in big games. Put on great numbers in big games. Never backed away from a challenge. His work ethic just speaks for itself. But that's going to do it. It's been your boy, Hit'em Up Trail. I'm gone.